Sean Tucker, I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, I work with people against injustice. Um, we're, we're, grassroots, uh, we're a grassroots group out of New Haven, Connecticut. We work on different prison issues, prison reform, criminal justice reform, um, police brutality, all type of things like that. Um, <clears throat> me, I've been, an, I've been an activist in the movement for, uh, for over 10 years now. You know, you may hear about some of the harsh realities of prison life and you say, well, if, um, you know, you, you know, you do the crime, you do the time. You know, you hurt somebody, you know, a lot of people automatically assume, you know, when someone goes to prison that they did something violent to somebody, and that's not always the case. Um, the majority of people that are in prison are there for non-violent drug offenses, and, um, and, and everybody suffers from the uh, prison industrial complex. So we have people there that, um, you know, that go through these dehumanizing uh, situations, and, you know, we always think about, well, you know, maybe they did a crime, but, um, the same, the same uh, uh, degradation and dehumanization that someone that kills somebody or something has to go through, I went through the same thing um, for a traffic violation. Um, me, I, this was some years ago, I was, uh, was a little bit younger, a little bit more foolish, and um, my license was suspended, and you know, I had a job, and I had a place to go, so I wasn't gonna stop driving. So, you know, I kept driving and, you know, a few times I got caught. And um, after about my third uh, ticket for driving on a suspension, and, and that is a that is a class A misdemeanor that's punishable up to a year in prison. Um, because of that, after my third offense, um, like she said, my public defender, if I had a lawyer, they would have never put up with that. But they told my public defender that, look, this guy got some, he got to do jail time. You know, he's, this is his third offense, you know. This is serious, he has to go to prison. So, you know, my public defender basically told me, but look, you know, they want jail time, they're not backing down from it. So, you know, you gotta make a decision right now <laughs> what you're gonna do. Are you gonna plead guilty and go away for this amount of time? Or are you gonna plead not guilty and just extend it out and you may, you're still gonna go away anyway? So um, what ended up happening is I ended up um, pleading guilty and copping out, it took six months. Um, and they, I, I, they made me do every day of it. Uh, and I ended up, going through these same things. I ended up going through strip search, you know, the bend over, you know, I'm not, I hate to be graphic, but this is what goes on. You know, spread your cheeks, cough, hold up this, bend over that, move that, open your mouth, lift your tongue out. I went through all that stuff for a traffic violation. Um, the, um, the person that I was, my cellmate was in, had been in there, he was on his eighth year of a 20 year sentence for murder. That's the guy that they put me in the cell with for trap for driving on a suspension. The guy across the hall from me was there 40 to life for shooting three cops. Um, another guy that was across from me was just got there. He, 30 years, he only been in there eight months. So, I mean, these are the things that happen that a lot of people don't don't realize. On um, the prison I was, that I was at, they had a riot. Two people got killed, you know what I mean? So, these are the things that are going on. It's not just people, it's not just about getting dangerous criminals off the street. It's about warehousing people and making money off of it and making the most money off it they possibly can. Um, they have these, they have, they have jobs in prison where people are making like a dollar fifty a day and they're working like eight, 10, 12 hour shifts doing stuff that people out here wouldn't make less than $20 an hour for. And I mean, it's just, that's all it is, is a plantation. The second you get there, they tell you that getting a job is part of you getting out of jail. You have to do this. You can't just go there and say, well, look, man, I don't want to work. I wasn't working in the street. I don't want to work in here. I just want to sit here, be peaceful, do my time, and go home. Mm -mm, nah, buddy. You better get a job. You have to get a job. Because when you go to parole, they're going to say, did this inmate take a job? And I'm only saying inmate because these are the terms they use. I don't really like that term in me. I like prisoner because that's what they are, prisoners. But this is what they say. You know what I'm saying? No, he didn't want to take a job. He just wanted to come here and sit around and do his time. They said, well, you know what? Oh, we're going to deny your parole come back in six months, and you probably should get a job between now and then, and we'll think about letting you out. I mean, these are the things that go on that people don't know about, um, the drug problems. People come in jail with drug problems. They get on these long, um, you get on these long lists to get into rehab. I mean, hundreds of people long. Um, you may do your whole sentence and get out before you even get a chance to go to rehab. You know what I mean? So, um, a lot of these people end up going through the same things, man. It's just a, just a vicious cycle, man. It's, it's crazy.